G'day mates! Now that's a good Kiwi greeting for you. <laughs> I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe and you can find me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Photoshop Cafe. Today's Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a dreamy romantic glow that adds romance and fairy tale kind of magic to every photograph, <laughs> whatever fairy tale magic is. So anyway, the photos that I'm using are all from Adobe Stock. So don't forget to check out Adobe Stock, guys. There's a lot of cool stuff there, and you can get those photos directly inside of Photoshop. Also look at the link below where I'll link to these images, as well as where you can get 10 free images, and also find out how to become a contributor, where you can uh, make a little extra money from your photos. So without further ado, let's get started on this first image. I'm going to show you three different techniques of working on this. I'm going to show you a real basic one. Then I'm going to show you one where we can enhance a little bit. And then we're going to do an advanced one in the third one where we can actually protect our highlight areas while still giving that glow. So what we're going to do is just pick up the highlight areas and we're going to make those glow. So the way to select the highlights is to go under the select menu, which is where all our selection tools are and go to color range. Now traditionally color range has worked on sampled colors where you would grab an eyedropper and you would just kind of select in a picture. But it also enables you to select midtones, highlights and shadows. So we're going to choose highlights. Now one of the things we have here is a range. Now this was added in Photoshop CC before that it was just a pre-selected amount. So we can decide, hey, how much of this do we want to pick up? So I'm going to take it all the way down just to grab the real bright white areas. So we're just going to click OK and that selects those areas. Now I want to copy those, just the selected areas, to a new layer. Now notice you see these areas, you're wondering, well, what about here? OK, bear in mind something. When these marching ants march, they're only visible over areas that are more than 50% selected. So we still have a selection here. It's just not showing with the marching ants. So let's hit Control J and we want to see what we've selected. You can see it there. So it's not a hard edge like you might have feared. It actually blends it in quite nicely. All right, so we've got two things left to do. We want to change the blend mode. Now there's two blend modes that work really well on this. And that's the screen mode. And notice that really just kind of makes it pop. It's only half the effect, so bear with me. The other one is overlay. Overlay will do kind of the same thing, but a little bit more subdued. Now, what we want to do is we want to give it a blur. So we're going to choose Filter Blur, and we're going to go down to the Gaussian Blur. Now, obviously, the reason I'm choosing the Subdued option in this too is because there's a lot of white in here, and we don't want to blow it out too much. So now we go in here. This is where we add our radius, which it gives us that glow part, or that dreamy part of the glow. Look at that, just like a fairy tale. So if we look at this before and after, you can see where that dreamy romantic glow is working. You can also adjust the opacity if you want to just kind of bring it down a little bit if you feel like it's just too overdone. Now let's move on to a fairy tale kind of a, a look on this. Like maybe this book, we want this book to glow a little bit like, you know, Disney kind of style. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it same way as we did before. Let's choose the select color range. And let's go down. Now notice it stays on the highlights. I just want to make sure just that book is selected. So I'm going to take the range all the way down and click OK. So now it's only selected in the very, very brightest areas on this book. And we can hit Control J or Command J to copy it. This time we're going to go to the screen mode because I want this to be really strong. Notice immediately how those yellowed pages become a bright white. Then we're going to choose Filter Blur. And we're going to add the Gaussian Blur. Now I'm going to show you one other step in here. Just hang with me. See, we've got that nice kind of a glow there. Let's make it glow more. This is really nice. So if we look at this before and after, we can see we've got that glow going on great. Now, if you wanted to go a step beyond that, we could actually give this an outer glow. So let's just go under the effects here. Why not? Let's just go to our glow options here. So we're going to choose Outer Glow, and we can really enhance this. Now you can add some color in there, obviously, but we don't want to do that. Like maybe give it a little bit of a, a fairy tale magic blue. Let's do that. Pull it back just a little bit. There we go. Looking good. And now you can play around with the size of this glow. 
and uh, the opacity that we want to add in there. See if you just want to give it a little bit of opacity about there, click OK. And so now if we look at this, there's the before and there's the after. See how we've really just kind of made that pop and come to life. All right, so here's our third one where we're going to do a more advanced glow here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the same steps we did before. We're just going to choose the select and we're going to grab our color range, pick our highlights. There's our highlight regions. Great. Click OK. And we've got those. Control J, copy them to a new layer. Same things we've done before. OK, let's put this one into a nice screen mode. Notice it's blowing out here. Don't worry about it for now. We're going to choose a blur. Uh, so let's choose the filter blur, give it a Gaussian blur, and we're going to give it a big blur. Let's do that. Nice big blur. See that? Big, big glow. Don't worry about all this right now. And we're even going to go in here and we're going to add an outer glow to really kind of make that pop a little bit more. Let's choose the outer glow. Set it to white this time. And let's turn up our opacity a little bit. There we go. Huge, huge glow there. Okay, very, very obvious glow. All right, now what we want to do is bring back some of the detail here in these highlight areas where it's just completely blown out and just ruining the image. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to go under the effects and click on blending options. This brings up our advanced blend modes or the blend of sliders, if you like. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the highlights on the top layer and pull that over a little bit. See how that brings it back? Before and after, ah, but we're losing our glow. Hold down the Alt or the Option key. I will split that triangle and then pull that side back. And now we can play around a little bit. And we're going to go up until we're protecting our inside. But that outer glow is still working. So let's click OK. And if we look at this before and after, you can see it's a lot better. We're just going to bring the opacity down just a little bit just to kind of tweak it. And look at that nice glow around the outside. Now, if you want to bring back a little bit more detail, even like in the face there of the dog, just click a mask. And we're going to grab a black brush, just a soft edged black brush here. And let's make that brush nice and big, nice soft edge brush with black. Make sure opacity is 100. And then just paint around the face of the dog and the detail that you want to protect right there in the middle and maybe just hit the lady's eyes just in case. Now we can even bring that opacity up even more. So there we have the before and the after. It's just a subtle effect now and it just adds that little bit of magic to the photograph. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did, hit the subscribe button right now. Become part of the Cafe Crew. Get a new tutorial every single week. And uh, add a comment. Let's get a discussion going. What do you think about that? Do you like this technique? Um, do you have any variations? Do you have any requests or questions? Pop those into the comments as well. More than happy to answer all of those. And hit that like button. Smash that like button. And until next week, I'll see you at the cafe.